And welcome to another edition of the Sartorial Geek Podcast by Webster Style, where we talk about bow ties, comic books, and everything in between. I'm your host, Webster Style, the man, the voice, the fragrance. And of course, let's jump right into the download. Now, this week's download is not actually a new game, but it's new to the Xbox platform. And the game is Solar Ash, and it is currently out for Xbox on all platforms as well as more importantly game pass which is how i'm playing it this week but you'll also find it both on the switch and the playstation family of platforms as well now this is an action game from developer heart machine and developers excuse me and publisher and pure interactive now and pure as well as devolver digital in my opinion are some of the best indie game publishers out there right now and up here interactive they've released uh what 12 12 minutes as well as uh memoir blue and i forget get the um ah the guitar music game that i really loved that came out last year year before uh, but they've done a stellar job of really publishing some really great indie titles and solar ash is no different than those so this is from the creators of the award-winning hyper light drifter and it it is a high speed and gravity bending world in it is set a mix excuse me a mist a surreal dreamscape filled with long abandoned ruins of great civilizations past you play as ray a void runner determined to stop at nothing to save her planet from falling prey to the ultra void's path of eternal hunger sounds a lot like galactus Fight through mobs or grotesque creatures, grind rails with sheer delight, grapple to wild heights, take down enormous bosses, and surf the ashen clouds of shattered bygone worlds, swallowed by the void. Now this one, I've only played a little bit of it, but it is beautiful. It is a game, if you have an opportunity to play it, it is just beautiful. If it has rail play, kind of reminiscent of Sonic, but with the color scheme and just the art direction it is just a beautiful easy affair it's just a great game to play i definitely recommend it that is solar ash from heart machine and anna pure interactive now this week's interview we're going back a little bit into the vault and we're talking with miss cabria thomas of signature sense by him she hand not ham Signature Scents by Hand. She is the owner and perfumer um, of the company. And it was interesting talking to her, learning about how she got into perfumery, how she's offering classes as well as what really motivates her to be a perfumer. So check out my interview and then we'll be right back. And we are here with uh, an entrepreneur, a fragrance guru someone who i have admired from afar uh for the past what two three years ago since i, I purchased tux and it is miss cabria thomas of uh signature sense by hand miss thomas how are you today i'm great how are you i'm doing bro i am doing very well i i love having these conversations but i love to pick the brains of people that I find to be interesting, especially when it comes to the fragrance world. And I was looking on your website and it's, you say that you started back in 2016, which isn't that long ago. I know you have a background of fashion. How, if at all, that leads you into fragrances? Um, so, uh, originally I went to school for fashion merchandising. So that was kind of my thing. I lived in New York my entire life. So I've always been into fashion. Um, I've always been into fragrances too, but I think fragrances was kind of one of those things I was just kind of born into. Like my mom wore a lot of fragrances. My stepfather was like really big on scents. Um, and in 2016, um, I just had this concept. Well, it was two, actually, actually two reasons of why I started into um, fragrances. So one, my skin started to get really sensitive to certain products that I would put on my skin. So that was one. Um, and I didn't really kind of understand the whole gist of that, of why my skin was getting, you know, bumpy and mm -hmm. rashes all on my arm. And I, I didn't really understand that. 
Um, and then the second reason was I just wanted to sell a product. I, I just had this idea that I wanted to sell a product. I didn't have an idea. I didn't know what it was going to be, but that was just kind of a thought process that I kind of had in the back of my mind. And it just so happened that those two things kind of happened at the same time. And one day, literally, I just kind of looked at my dresser and I thought, what if I sell fragrances? You know, I've always worn fragrances. It kind of has been a thing that I've been doing my entire life. So why not kind of start that creative avenue of fragrances? And so um, back then I had like a big box of um, business cards. And so I went through business cards of people that I've interacted in the past and to see if I know anyone in the fragrance industry or someone that can kind of help me jumpstart this idea. And I realized I know absolutely no one in um, this industry. And so I started using Google as a resource to see, you know, how can I start this up? And then um, I started reading articles about certain products, certain chemicals that aren't really good for the skin, which is found in perfume and a lot of cosmetic uh, products that women use. And then that's when I came up with the idea of what if I used a cleaner um, aspect of when it comes to um, making fragrances and seeing if this is something that I could even make. And then I just kind of kept doing more and more research. And now <laughs> here we are um, years later. Okay. All right. So I was going to ask you in, in your bio, it says that you took about three months before you actually developed your, your first fragrance. And I'll get to that one in a minute. So a lot of it was just going on Google, looking at YouTube, reading books to, to teach yourself yeah. perfumery. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Um, and I mean, even now I'm like, I'm still learning. Um, cause I feel like you can never learn to, so like, you're right. always a student. There are always, always so many things that you can learn. Like I'm still learning about new oils and new mixtures that I can put together to create certain uh, scents and things of that nature. So honestly, for me, it was just Google and trial and error and having like the actual products right in my face and just kind of figuring it out all together, honestly. Right. Now, now with that, your first fragrance was yours. What was... You know, outside of being in the lab and mixing this and mixing that and trying to figure out what worked right, what was your inspiration for that fragrance? Um, so <clears throat> I want to say maybe, um, well, it, myself, <laughs> um, I was thinking about like what I like to wear, what 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 are kind of some scents that I like to smell, um, and I guess you can say kind of my mom in a sense just thinking back about like what I wore and you know while I was in the process of creating the scent I wasn't thinking about this um but now looking back that was kind of the inspiration behind yours of just a woman who's very feminine and who loves to smell good and feel good and very confident in herself and even if she's having like a bad day I want her to spray yours on and feel how she, how she wants to feel. I want yours to kind of, when she sprays that on, she feels the confidence and the elegance and I'm her to feel sexy and very confident herself. Um, so that was kind of the inspiration behind that. And um, I talk about this a lot, but this is, has, it, I think it still will be like my favorite phrase altogether. Um, it's Queen, it's called Queen by Queen Latifah. It has discontinued but it's actually one of my favorite fragrances. And unfortunately my skin is very sensitive, so I can't even wear it anymore. Um, but that also kind of inspired some of the notes in um, yours as well. So that was also inspiration behind that scent too. Understood, I, I love it. And I have to go, since this is the one I've, and the, the funny thing is I didn't even buy it for me. <laughs> I bought it for some family members uh, as part of like a Christmas basket. And I'm like, oh, nice. I am very big, you, know, you you've seen, some of my, my social media, I'm very big into black owned fragrances. And when I found yours, I'm like, okay, I was reading the notes of Tux. I'm like, this is perfect for what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do for this holiday. So I, I bought a, a, a couple Yay. of travel sizes as part of sort of a, a travel gift pack uh, yes, that I made up. No problem. Very welcome. And I want to ask you, so what was your, what was the idea behind Tux? Um, so, I feel like after I created yours, right, 
people were instantly asking for a cologne. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> I honestly just wanted to make this one set. I wanted to be one and done and just kind of move on with it. And then people were asking me, oh, can you make a cologne? Can you replicate a set? You know, they started creating these all these projects for me. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I should look into that. Maybe I should, you know, because I can't have an option for women and not have an option for men. Sure. Um, and so I sat down and I really thought like, okay, well, how do I go about making a cologne? Like, I know what I would like a man to smell like, but I personally, I love sweet and soft and vanilla um, type of scent. So it was kind of like, I had to really get and think about if I were, if, if I were a man, what would I want to smell like? Right. And so that was kind of hard, a hard concept for me. So I started thinking, how would I like my man to smell? So that's kind of how I started thinking about it. Um, and a lot of men that I know women shop for their scents, they're not necessarily shopping for themselves. So I started taking that into consideration. Um, and I don't know for tux, I feel like I honestly wanted tux to be um, something that a guy could wear when he's going out, um, whether it's on a date, um, he wants to show out, but he's loud, but not too loud, not too bold, but you smell him when he walks in the room and you want to know who, where's the scent coming from? And so that was kind of the concept behind Tux, um, something really elegant. But now that Tux is out, I'm realizing that Tux is now like an everyday scent. You can wear this just running errands. You can wear this in the office. It's not too, too loud. It's not too, too bold, but it's bold enough that, you know, you have that presence in the room. So um, that was my concept behind Tux, but now Tux is kind of like a, everyday type of a signature scent, which I love. Understood. Now, kind of going back to a statement I made earlier, mm -hmm. there are, one of the beautiful things about the internet, especially social media, is that you're able to, as a, a consumer, or just, you know, regular person who scrolls the internet, you know, two, three hours a day, like all of us, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you're able to find brands and businesses that you would have never known existed if, if we didn't have that platform. And I have had the great fortune of learning about many black owned brands and then being able to patronize them as I've started my own fragrance journey about 2017, 2018 or so. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen say an, an uptick in say traffic or business or just general awareness because of the overall sort of heightened sense of black owned fragrance companies specifically on the put me insta particularly instagram but instagram and tiktok yeah um so to answer your question yes um i want to say i feel like i didn't enter the community per se until maybe like 2018 2019 um because starting out i was just like okay you know i was doing events i was doing more of like a in-person type of thing and right. i didn't know that there was like a whole community on like instagram and there's specific hashtags and there are fragrance influencers people that actually like love fragrances and they talk about you know scents and how it makes them feel and comparing and contrasting different scents so i didn't really know that there was like a whole community um so i want to say um i entered the community like 2018 ish and um i started learning more and more about um black perfumist and honestly i started googling I couldn't find anything, but it's really a whole big deal on Instagram. And, and I'm actually fortunate enough that I've been able to patronize a few um, Black perfumists as well. So for me, um, I feel like it's not really about competition because right. there's so many fragrances. I mean, people have, there's so many options. So um, I think that's what makes us different and unique. And I just love that I'm a part of this community and that we get to, you know, compare and contrast and check out each other's scents and things of that nature. So yeah, I have definitely seen an increase, um, especially on Instagram. Like it really is like a big deal. And I'm just like fortunate enough to be a part of the community, honestly. Yeah, I think I, I love that aspect, especially Instagram. I feel TikTok is I'm still the algorithm sometimes I'm still, is weird. I'm still trying. <laughs> 
yeah, that discovery piece on Instagram as far as that not Instagram, but TikTok is kind of weird because Instagram, the discovery is really good for networking. Yes. In my opinion. And mm-hmm. I, I've been able to really connect with a lot of people over the years and in, in for Icom and other aspects of, of what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, it really the algorithm there really sets you up good with people and branching yes. off there. I TikTok, agree. I would say not so much mm-hmm. um with the way the algorithm works. Like I've met some interesting people but not so much frag come for the most part because okay. a lot of people i have connected with there mm-hmm. i've already connected with the instagram so it's okay. one of those things where, and also tiktok is still pretty young c- mm-hmm. compared to instagram. instagram yeah so it's you don't have as many you just don't have as many people in there full-time uh mm-hmm. really in Fragcom, really you know hyping their brands for the most part like you do um on and Instagram, but I, I love it, and I'm, I'm, as you see, I'm there all the time. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm still learning in um, TikTok. I really am, um, but I'm getting there step by step. So let's talk about your fragrance. You have a whole line featuring the Zodiac. Outside of the Zodiac part of it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what inspired you to do a whole line with all of the I guess the the symbols of the Zodiac Mm -hmm. or the constellations. Um, So that actually came to me, I want to say in 2018. Um, Sometimes these ideas just pop up in my head and I have the urge to want to tackle on this project. And um, for me personally, I've never really heard too much about like a, a entire Zodiac collection. I even did research. Like there are a few people that do do it. Um, but it's, it's not like a, a really big thing. Um, and I feel like I started getting into Zodiac a little bit, um, around that time. And so I just kind of did research again, I love doing research, um, on each different signs and figuring out like the personality traits and how I can intertwine that with, um, the oils, um, and then I was also putting my people who I personally know into consideration as well, too, and kind of intertwining that. Uh, so one thing I have realized now that I've been doing this for some time is that um, there are personality traits to certain scents. And so I was I was basically intertwining that when I did my research on um, the Zodiac collection. So um, I don't want to say I have like a inspiration per se. It honestly was just like an idea that popped up in my head and I was like hmm that sounds like a great idea let me look into it and do some more research and I started doing more and more research and honestly it was a really challenging uh project because it is 12 cents which is a lot of sense to make which is why they're only in travel size right now and a lot of people have been asking me for full size and that will come in due time um and so when I started the project, I, d- I said, OK, well, 12 cents is a lot to just put out all at once. That That's just a lot. And so I said, OK, well, let me pace myself and let me do half and half. And so I started with the first six and then I um, eventually did the last six. And when I first was in the process of uh, putting this out, I ended up getting pregnant. And so I had to like keep delaying the project back a little bit because it was like I had a lot going on and being a new mom and trying to put things in perspective and like putting my personal life first um so that was just like a big project in itself but I'm actually really happy of the results and people wearing other scents too like I have a friend who's a water sign and she's like I'm not really into fire signs, but I love Aries and I love this scent and so on and so forth. And I'm like, you know, what? it's great. Sometimes, you know, if you like your scent and another scent, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people mix and match. Um, and I just love it, honestly. I, now, let me ask you about this as far as the Zodiac. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the notes for a lot of me seem to shift more toward the ladies. Is that the target or are they meant to be more like a unisex collection? So I want to say they do target the women more. Um, okay. I will say I feel like there are two scents that I think could be um, uh, unisex, and that's uh, Virgo and Sagittarius. Um, I will in the future look into doing a more uh, masculine uh, Zodiac sign uh, collection as well. But again, this, <laughs> it's just it's just a process, you know. I understand. Um, 
I personally feel like um, for me, I think uh, masculine scents are a little bit more challenging for me because, um, you know, you can go wild. You can go extreme. I mean, like, I feel like Sky is the, like, you can do whatever you can, whatever you want with um, masculine scent. So I feel like it's still like a trial and error. It's still um, something that I'm learning, um, which is why I think that's why I have just one masculine scent, which is Tux, but mm -hmm. women purchase it. So I do sell it unisex. But um, I think maybe in the future, most of my masculine scents might end up being unisex. I So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens in the future, honestly. That's understandable. And, and I would say, especially when you look at a, a lot of male and female or fragrances that are targeted for men and fragrance that are targeted for women, because really you can wear what you want. <laughs> you can smell how you want. You know, <laughs> peppermint doesn't say man or woman <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you exactly, pick it up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's you, you see a lot of notes just kind of bounce between the two targeted uh, yeah. genders in, in this regard. So it's it's really about you know, how everything mixes and what you what you really like uh, yeah. yourself. And your body chemistry too. That, yes, that, that is well. A That's a part into it too, yeah. Very big thing. I always say, and I tell everyone, fragrances, one of the reasons I love fragrances so much because it's an intimate experience because no fragrance smells the same it on is. every person yeah. because of body chemistry. It may still smell similar, but mm -hmm. not the same. It's going to work yeah. for you different than it'll work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, my, um, when I have people like test out scents, especially when I'm at events, I never spray it on paper. Paper, ha I always say paper has a scent. So like how it's going to smell on the paper versus how it's going to smell on your clothing versus how it's going to smell on you, it's going to smell completely different. So the best way to try on a, a scent is to spray it on yourself and see, go, let your, let the um, scents going through the motions of your skin and see how the top, middle, and base notes all combine and intertwine onto your skin and, you know, go through your day and go through your errands, run your errands and things like that and see how the scent smells on you. Because honestly, the last thing I want is people to go through buyer's remorse because they smell something on the paper and they smell right. it their skin. They're like, wait, this doesn't smell the same. So that's kind of how um, I do my, um, sampling process especially if it's in person yeah paper for me like i'll smell it just to get a sense of it mm -hmm. but it never smells the same when you spray it on you yeah it, or it even really, if you smell it on the does. bottle you're like mm, it smells good but no you right. have to experience the scent right exactly now i want to ask you this question is it just you are you the only one mixing and bottling and packaging or do you have a, a team and, and i ask that because um I have a, a lady entrepreneur that's very near and dear to my heart who I've been her assistant for the past 16 years. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so um, are you the only one doing this? Do you have help? I'm sure it can so be I, quite a glorious task. <laughs> everybody house. asks this question. So I do um, when it comes to like the virtual aspect of things like social media. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll have like a virtual team come and help me with blogging and doing social media and keeping that aspect of things. Um, so I'll like hire people from time to time, especially during peak hour, um, peak season, um, because sometimes it's just a challenge for me to do everything. Um, but when it comes to like, making the sense and things of that nature that's all me i still have yet to build a trust and a rapport with someone because again this is like my baby um knowing like the ingredients of how i make everything um and i still have yet to find someone that i can trust enough to like help with too. that so like i mean i might have family members here and there help me but like I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, it's all me. Hey. Uh-oh, I can't see you. Hey. He's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he disappeared. Oh, oh. 
Actually, for me, it was the other way around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, where do you go? <laughs> the internet is a funny thing. Mm -hmm. You were talking about finding somebody to trust as far as the mixing and everything. Yes, yes. So um, it's always been a challenge for me to find someone that I can trust with that. So like I'll have, you know, family members come and, you know, help me here and there, especially if it's like a really, really big project. Like I, the last big project I had, it was like a custom order. And um, I think he did like over 80 bottles and he needed it at a specific time. And so like it's crunch time and there's only so much that one person can do. So I had someone like a family member, a few family members helping me. I would mix, um, create the, the scent. We would pour in the bottle, put the label on and package it up and put it um, to ship it out and things of that nature. So when I have really, really big orders and usually I like to do everything by myself, but when I have those big orders, I have to, I have to get that help. So, you know, here and there I'll get help, but for the most part, it's just me with the uh, creating process of it. Understood. Now, one of the things that you are doing, using all of your time, your energy and the research you've done over the years to do DIY classes and workshops. That's one of the things that I really like about what you're doing is that you're taking a lot of you've attained and are still attaining, attaining yeah. and then passing it on. How did that come about? That is a really good question. It actually came from my customers. Honestly, I think most of my, besides like me coming up with like uh, the Zodiac collection, I think literally everything else was my clientele. So I've had a few people that would ask me, you know, um, I think the first person that asked me, I was like at a event um, vending and she asked me, um, do you do any DIY classes? Um, my best friend, she's getting married soon and I would like to gift her something and, you know, you know, do something nice, like a girl's night in type of thing. And I was like, yeah, sure, I can do it. But then I had to go back to Google, do my research and see how do people even do this? How do you set it up? Like, what are the tools and materials? Like, I know the tools and materials that I use, but how much do I really need? Um, what should be the max and minimum amount of people? So I had to do like all that research to see how would I do this for myself and how are people doing this for their businesses and watching a lot of YouTube videos. And so um, I did that event, which was really nice and personal. And the next event I did, I actually collaborated with a good friend of mine who makes jewelry. And so we did a DIY where you could do jewelry and make fragrances together. And that was really, really fun. The results we saw were really, really good. And I was like, you know what, this is great. Maybe I should expand this more. People can make body butters and, um, candles i did my first virtual um diy like a few weeks ago i never did a virtual diy before and it was great we actually were like on a zoom call and i was prepping her and teaching her how to make um, the body butters and i shipped the uh, products to, out to her we had a nice conversation and i was like wow this is great i didn't think i could do a virtual um diy as well too that's cool. And I, I like that the whole idea of like a girl's night or, or bridal showers yeah. or, you know, not even just for the ladies, but it's, yeah. it's just a fun activity and it's a different activity um, yeah. as, as well, especially as, you know, we're trying to find different things to do, um, out, especially as we get older. We need, you know, we need to change our lives, yeah. do different things. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fun to keep your mind off of what's stressing you out. Bring your right. friends, come alone, like, you know, have Exactly. Fun. Have a couple cocktails, make some candles, yes. make some fragrances. Yes. Yes. Right. Aromatherapy, exactly. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. That's awesome. And I thought that was just really cool. I've 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 seen a lot of not necessarily uh fragrance courses or candle. I've seen a lot of people transition to more of the e courses. And at first, when I saw this, this is what I thought it was, was like, oh, she's doing the e-course and, and fragrance making. That's really cool. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's that's just a really neat idea of like doing it like a party sort of thing and, yeah. and teaching that way. And mm -hmm. that way you get the hands on the interaction. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was just a, a really, really great idea. And also one that I think that could, from a business perspective, you know, can really help build your brand as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I do agree. Um, I had a student um, back in February for Black History Month. Um, I did a DIY 
in um, Brooklyn. Um, and I had a student that attended one of my fragrance one-on-one -on -one courses. He actually came down and like he knew how to make it, but it was like, there's nothing like that in-person interaction and actually getting to meet your instructor in person and build a better rapport and things of that nature. So I definitely do agree. It does help with, um, you know, the business aspect of things too. I'm right. I'm right. So I definitely appreciate your time, uh, Ms. Mm -hmm. Thomas. Could you let everybody know where they can find you? Yes, you guys can find us on um, Instagram, Facebook. We are on TikTok, but we're not active as of yet. Um, Signature Sense by Hand on everything. So that's where you can find us. And our website is SignatureSenseByHand.com. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys Thank later. You. <laughs> Thank you. And that was my interview with Miss Cabria Thomas. It was definitely a pleasure actually speaking with the women behind fragrances that I've purchased. I purchased, as I said, an interview tucks before as gifts for family members of Christmas or two ago, and they absolutely loved it. Speaking of fragrances, let's talk about our fragrance of the week. This one is one that is new to my nose and one I have to get a bit more wears out of. Uh, but I like it nonetheless, and it is Sketch by Violet. You're going to find top notes of bergamot, nutmeg, and pink pepper, mid notes of rose and tuberose, and then base notes of patchouli, bourbon vanilla, and tonka bean. It is described as a floral, spicy, unisex fragrance that features longevity that is above average. Well, I would definitely say the longevity is above average. It is a fragrance that upon initial uh spraying that that nutmeg that bergamot really uh the spice of the top notes the nutmeg and the bergamot and the pink pepper really are front and center to my nose and then with the rose it really mellows it out it gives a nice floor but it's not a heavy sort of rose water e rose um it's very subtle and then we get into the sultriness of the patchouli, the bourbon vanilla, the tonka bean. It adds a nice sweetness and a little earthiness to it as well. It is such a beautiful fragrance in my opinion. I definitely agree that this is unisex. I can't say excuse more masculine feminine. Uh, based on people's preferences, they will make that decision for themselves. But it is uh, definitely a fragrance that i'm looking forward to wearing again and again at least until this sample runs out so that is my take on sketch by violet and of course i am everywhere around the web and if you are so inclined to support outside of just your listening ear uh, feel free to stop by basil and sage and use the code tutorial and geek 10 for a 10% discount on your subscription box. I don't know if just subscription in general or your first box. Right now, boxes are retailing for 50 bucks, so you get a few five dollars off of that box. And trust me, you will get a plethora of items that far exceed that $50 value and items that so far, at least for me, I use pretty much a majority of every single thing that has come in each and every box that I've received thus far from Basil and Sage. Also, stop by Pete and Pedro and use the referral link below in the show notes to get 10% off your first purchase, whether it is fragrances, whether it's hair products, whether it's deodorants. It's all good over there, Pete and Pedro. And then if you're like me who lives off of caffeine and doesn't want all of the sugar that is laden in so many energy drinks, Try Dubby, uh, Dubby Energy Drink. Get 10% off your first purchase with the code WebSaman or use the show notes, or not the show notes, but the link in the show notes below. And as I said before, I'm all over the place on the internet here over at WebSouth, Satorian and Geek. But of course, I'm over with my man, my men's, my family over at Nerds of the World. Check me out twice a week over there. Maybe more depending on how many reactions and things that we do. But definitely you'll find me with my man Brian Sav talking about the latest in gaming each week over at the NRW checkpoint. Then we head back over to the squared circle with the NRW internet trio champion myself and then with the legend Kuya P and the voiceover king Sean Mongo talking wrestling 
over at Baby Baby, the NRW Ring Generals podcast. Of course, I'm all over social media all day, every day, several times a day. Instagram, Webster Style, Historian Geek, Twitter, Webster Style, and of course, TikTok underscore Webster Style. And if you want to hit me up, you know, check me out over at WebsterStyle.com and shoot me an email at info at WebsterStyleMagazine.com. I thank you again for your time. I thank you again for your listening ear. And remember, stay safe out there and be blessed. Smoking hot, rocking this pen so oh. thin. Tie hairline, looking like a skin so oh. pimp. No lie, I'm sharper than a utensil. Oh. And stroke, mental, plain dang, homie. I was hoping we could walk out with that bang bang, honey. See them plain James, honey. Get them lame friends, funny. We tell it, fit it crazy like I think came on me. Hey, mommy. Look a lady, main thing, want me on the scene. Fit popping like a main vein, running blood color, lip smashing with the hand. Clutch money, holding bag, kind of funny. Can you tell me what's the price I got the range? Rover. Hang on me when we walking, looking Gucci like that thing sprayed on me. Walking with a lip like an ankle sprain on me. Yeah, I rock the cardigan. She don't really want me because one man should have all that style. Take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. And the one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it up and let me see what's under them scenes. Cause no one man should have all that style. Take it out, take it out, clothes on the floor, pass it. And the one girl should fit it all in them jeans. So take it up and let me see what's under them on the floor pal and no one girl should fit it all in them jeans so take it up and let me see what's under them scenes oh you wanted to oh i completely read that wrong <laughs>